We're Chris and Tova, and we've spent 500 days traveling from Canada to Costa Rica and back with our two bulldogs, Tigger and Penelope, and our rooftop tent. Find out what we loved and hated, what made us laugh and cry, and our favorite campsites along the way. So we've been traveling the last 500 days. What have the things been that you loved the most about the trip? The, the animals and the birds and like each country is very diverse, like it's very different in each country. The landscapes, the, the volcanoes, the waterfalls, the hills, all that. Sampling all the food that uh, each country has, like pupusas and of course the, the coffee. Even though uh, I'd have to go and say that Costa Rica's coffee was the best so far, but every country has a different flavor and taste like El Salvador and Nicaragua were really good coffees as well. I think the things that I liked the best was just being able to be outside and be in nature so much, so many beautiful things like Chris said. Of course campfires, I always want to have a campfire if we can. Even in the rainy season, Chris would be out there lighting up the campfire with the wet wood. I liked I liked being able to spend so much time with Chris and Tigger and Penelope. That's been a real, a real blessing, a real treasure. And just like, I feel like throughout the last 500 days, we really had the opportunity to explore off the beaten path in a lot of these countries. So we didn't just go to places that people go if they're on vacation, like the big tourist spots. We did hit a few of those places but we got a lot deeper into a lot of the countries and got to see like some really beautiful things that you wouldn't just happen upon if you were coming for a week. So what was your favorite wildlife on this trip? The toucans that we saw in Costa Rica and they came really close to us too. Yeah, you got some really good photos and... It's like they were posing. I'd have to say the sloths and there was uh, one camp in particular, we got really close to this one sloth and he was just like going through his whole morning routine and he was like stretching and scratching his belly. And it was just really awesome to be able to not only see it, but also to actually capture it on film at the same time, because those sloths can be pretty elusive and they can be pretty hard to spot. They often just look like a fuzzy cat sleeping up in a tree. Okay, so we visited a lot of different countries and you sampled all the different local beers from there. So what were your favorite beers from each country? Well, in Costa Rica, it have to be Imperial. Like that's their the number one beer in Costa Rica. Uh, in Nicaragua, of course, it's Tonya. In El Salvador, and actually in Guatemala as well, it was El Dorado. Which is, means the gold. The gold. The gold or golden. Yeah. In Mexico, ironically, Victoria. It's not the same Victoria in Nicaragua. It's surprising that it's not Sol or... Um, Modelo. Corona. And I don't drink that many beers, but I would say I like Corona better, but I only like it if it's in a bottle and with a lime. I don't, I don't really like canned beer. Yeah. <laughs> what would you pick as uh, the scariest moment of the trip? Something that scared you along this trip? Okay, I'm sure everyone's thinking like, oh, it was like some police check stop or like something happened at a camp or people scared us. No, it was totally safe the whole time, uh, but we did have a real scare. We were in Guatemala and we were camping at this water park and where we were camped was down by a laguna. And Tig and Pinnell, we always have them on their leashes or on their tie outs. Um, Tig, the odd time, we'll let him off and just let him like do his business on his own. And we're, we're watching him, we're like two feet from him. He doesn't go very fast. No, or very far. And so 
like any other day, you know, we're getting ready for bed. I've got Penel on her leash doing her business. Chris has got Tig and he's just off his leash and Chris is right beside him. And Tig got a little too close to the Laguna. He tried to have a drink of the water. And it was too far down and he slipped in. And I don't know if you've heard us say before, but bulldogs cannot swim. Like they sink like rocks, they're really heavy. And we actually had an incident in Nicaragua. Tig was following me while I was carrying his kibble and he fell in the pool and he went straight to the bottom and I jumped right in and rescued him and pulled him out. So it's pitch black. Tig falls into this laguna. Chris yells for me. I come running. I jump in. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> Luckily, Tigger, he was actually like, his little paws were actually swimming and Chris was calling him to the side and like he kept swimming and his head actually never went underwater. I dove in, I grabbed him and he was totally fine. But it definitely scared us. I mean, it scared him too because he wasn't, he wasn't trying to go in the water. Okay, so this is the big one. What was your favorite adventure of the trip? So my favorite adventure... Uh, it'd have to be the Santa Ana volcano, the, the crater. Like it was like super, it was super blue in the crater. Oh yeah, like blue, like blue green like you've never seen before. Yeah, it was gorgeous. That was definitely a spot I thought it was going to be nice and we had seen pictures online. But when we got to the top, OMG, it was, it was better than the pictures even showed. The other really awesome spot was the one place we went in Mexico, El Chifron. And it had like all these, again, blue-green cascading pools. And where we were camped was actually kind of at the end of the cascading pools. Um, but then we were able to hike all the way back and see like multiple waterfalls as we started going up and up and uphill. Uh, ending at the Bride's Vale waterfall. <laughs> so what was your favorite food over the last 500 days? Because it's different types. Like, I mean, we had different kitchens, we'll say. We had like a camp kitchen. We had a kitchen at Airbnbs. And then there was prepared food. At like restaurants. So my favorite camp food that we cooked in camp would be makatak. What's your favorite camp cooked food? Favorite food cooked in camp? I mean makatak is pretty good. One of our favorites for sure. Um, I would say probably butter chicken from scratch is my my favorite food that we've cooked in camp. My favorite Airbnb food. I mean I loved making pierogies over Christmas. So uh, those were super delicious because they're handmade at the Airbnb by us. So the pierogies were pretty awesome, and especially Christmas pierogies, because that's tradition. Yeah, I mean, pierogies are always, always a favorite. I love making pierogies. Um, they're really fun to make and it is our Christmas tradition, so we only did a small batch because we weren't taking any with us. Paired foods, like a restaurant, it was more like a takeaway. So it was uh, pupusas. And I would have to agree with Chris, the pupusas in El Salvador. Um, we did have some pupusas in Costa Rica, and they were good, but they weren't the same as the pupusas in El Salvador. Like, just to go to a little food stall and... Um, or like a little roadside stand and like get the pieces. It's really awesome. I'm definitely gonna learn how to make the pieces. It's on. It's on my to-do list. But if anyone's got any good tips or an awesome recipe, I've looked a few up online. But you know, it's always good to have somebody's recipe from their abuela that's you know tried and tested. So while we were on our 500 days of travel through, um, well, really. North America and all of most of most of Central America. Uh, we only went as far as Costa Rica. We met so many nice people, so many nice foreigners. We had a lot of great exchanges and chats, and you know, people helping us along the way, and just like so many. Good
good positive experiences uh, with local people. That was one of the, the highlights of the trip. Probably one of my favorites or one of my best encounters. Uh, we were staying at a house in El Salvador and a kind of funny story how we ended up at this house. We actually made some friends at a campsite and he was originally from El Salvador but has since moved to Texas and it was his old house and he's like hey you should you know stay at my old house you know I know the owner and so he set it all up for us and we went to the house it was amazing but um, at the house so they have like a housekeeper and she was there and she was like super nice and just like friendly trying to like help us out help us unpack and she made some food for us and really nice coffee and anyway I'm just chatting with her and you know she's telling me that she's got two kids and you know yada 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 and so we were there for a couple of days and it was uh, I think it was the last day we were there um, she'd come in the morning and then we were just chatting about her kids and she's like oh would you would you like to meet my kids I said oh sure yeah and she's like okay well let's um she's like okay well let's let's go to my house like I don't live far from here we can just walk okay so off I go. We get to her house and she definitely, you know, lives in a very modest, modest local house. I met her two kids. They were really friendly, like chatted with them for a couple of minutes and she showed me around the house and, you know, they really don't have a lot, but they're really happy people, really proud people and they have chickens at their house. And you know, I noticed in the kitchen that they really didn't have a lot of food, but they did have like a couple of fresh eggs and I didn't say anything, but before we left the house, she's like, oh, I, I'd like you to have these, these two eggs. Like I want to give them to you as a gift. And I, you know, in Spanish said to her like, oh, I, I really, I can't take these. And I just thought it was so sweet that she was offering me like the two eggs that she had as a gift. And I could see that they really didn't have um, very much food at all. So there's no way that I could take the, their last two eggs. Like, um, So anyway, we went back to the house. And, and of course, before we left, we, we gave her some food and stuff to take back home with her. Some soups and granola bars and just some stuff like that. And she was really appreciative. But just the fact that, you know, she invited me to her house. And clearly they don't have a lot. But she was wanting and willing to, to give us what she had and I just thought that was very special. What about you sweetie? What was, what was an encounter that stuck out in your mind in the last 500 days? We were at, I think it was called like the Lagoon, I don't know what exact location it was, it was a lagoon of some sort and we read online or we saw videos online that all around the lagoon People mistake it for being like hard ground, but it's actually like soft when you uh, park on it. The weight of your vehicle, you, you'll slowly start sinking. And then later on that night, until it's cooking supper, there was a vehicle that went down to and watch, I guess, the sunset or watch something. And I'm like, oh man, it's, you know, good thing it's a fairly light Jeep, like a, a Cherokee. Jeep Cherokee, but when they went to leave, they backed up and instantly realized they're stuck. So they went forward, backward, forward, backward. They were stuck. They sunk all the way to their chassis. So this Jeep is stuck. <clears throat> they're trying to get out. Well, some locals pass by and they're like, you know, try to help push it out, push it out. They couldn't push it out. Then came this giant two and a half ton truck. It looked like They've done this before, so it pulled up, hooked on to the, or went to go and hook onto the vehicle, but before it can get there, it got stuck and it sunk down its <laughs> axles and it couldn't move anymore. <laughs> so the recovery truck is now stuck. And it was almost like a perfect Nissan commercial. Well, it's Nissan zips over and it pulls out the two and a half ton truck, no problem. Yeah. Boom, that two and a half ton truck out. Not a big deal. It backed away. It's in the safe zone now. And Nissan's still to the rescue to go and help out this Jeep Cherokee. So the two and a half ton truck, don't know where it came from. 
but they were willing to help. Mm-hmm. The Nissan was willing to help. There was a whole soccer game going on that they stopped the soccer game and they came over to go and help pull out these vehicles. Everyone passing by was, able, was, in, was in the muck trying to pull dirt away, trying to go and make tracks, throw down rocks, throw down, you know, logs for things to, for them to drive on to, get new rope. Overall, just a nice, uh, kind, generous, willing to help drop everything, you know, drop everything and help these poor people out. Um, that was, it was really nice. Yeah, I would say down in, in Central America, the people are so nice. And I mean, we say that we're from Canada and everyone says Canadians are so nice and, and we are nice. But I, I think it's a different level of nice. Like everybody here wants to help you. Everybody wants to say hello and wave and smile. Um, you know, I do sometimes find at home, like I'm walking down the street past somebody and I smile at them and like, they don't even look your way sometimes. And you're like, we're here. Like you pass somebody, you say hello, you wave. Like, you know, someone's driving down the road. If you're stopped, like they, they give a wave. They want to check to make sure like you're okay. Should I keep on driving or do you need help? Like, yeah, it's just, it's a different level of kindness. I think it's, it's really nice. So we told you what we loved. Now we'll tell you what we hated about the trip. And first I would say hate is a really strong word. I don't think we hated anything. Um, but if I had to pick something that maybe like disliked a little bit, it would have to be the bathroom situations. <laughs> You just never knew what you're gonna get yourself into. So, is there a toilet seat? Is there not toilet seat? Is there paper? Is there not paper? How clean is it? Um, and, you know, we went to some bathrooms that were really clean. I would say there were a lot of bathrooms that were clean-ish, probably would not be considered clean to Canadian, North American uh, standards, but they were, they were okay. Um, and then we were also at some places that the bathrooms were really nasty and you know You'd probably rather just find a tree or a bush somewhere And I would say the worst thing <laughs> the One thing that I hated the most was the cold showers. Yeah, the cold showers I just couldn't get used to it like there there was times That it'd be a cold shower or advertised as a cold shower but it would sit in like a sit in a tank outside a black plastic tank so the sun would warm it up so it wasn't really a cold shower but when it wasn't in a tank and it was coming straight out of the ground or right from the creek that was some really cold water like incredible and then it was like bone chilling cold and you're like so so locations that had hot showers or even just warm showers oh So we've been so many different places in the last 500 days. Favorite country? El Salvador. El Salvador is the winner. If you've been following our channel, we've mentioned that on other videos so far. Um, We really loved it when we came through um, on our way down through Central America. And then spending a month on the way back just really solidified that. The roads are really good. Really like the roads. All the camp spots were pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. I think as a country, El Salvador just has a lot to offer. Like they've got beaches, they've got tons of volcanoes, they've got lots of like green spaces, and it's still like a fairly like developing country, but it's very safe and like even the cities are pretty well thought out. Like and they have pupusas. And they have pupusas, which that's that's a reason to be the best country, just because of that. So if you have not been to El Salvador, put it on your travel list. You won't regret it. People always want to know what what was our favorite campsites. We've been to so many campsites. If you find us on iOverlander and check out our history, oh my god, there's so many. So the best we can do is narrow it down, I think top three per country and just so everyone knows these are in no particular order like they're not the top there are top three but they're not like Mm -hmm. ranked 
So just to make it easy, we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way to the top. So we'll start with Costa Rica. And we were in Costa Rica camping for five months. So we hit a lot of spots in Costa Rica. You might also wanna check out our top Costa Rica campsites because we give you more than three. But our top of the top. I nicknamed them all the different sites. I nicknamed them because I can't remember all the names, but I always call it the Valley. Uh, which is Lagos del Rio, and that's right near the town of La Fortuna. The volcano. Yeah, so uh, we camped a lot around Arno Volcano. This spot was called Mirador La Armonia, but I know they've recently changed their name to Montaña de Azucra. Sugar? Sugar. Sugar Mountain. Amazing, amazing Arno Volcano views from there fish farm so we visited more than one fish farm but the one that he's talking about it's called Turin Gardens and it is very close to Monteverde it's a great location if you want to do a lot of other tourist activities in the Monte Verde area like zip lining and cloud forests and suspension bridges and if, the, if that's your thing there's a lot of that in that area so it'd be a good good spot to camp and check out the activities the next country in line would be Nicaragua. And even though we love Nicaragua, most of the time we were in Nicaragua, we did spend at our house at San Juan del Sur. We've not done a lot of camping in Nicaragua thus far, but we do have one campsite that we really, really like, and it's an excellent spot if you're traveling to Samato Canyon to check out the canyon, or if you're someone who's traveling between the countries and you're looking for a good stopover just before the border. The name of the campsite is Camping Salinas in Samato Canyon, and it's just outside Samato Canyon, and you can find it on iOverlander. Okay, which country is next on the list? It would be El Salvador. Because we never stayed in Honduras. Honduras doesn't have a lot of opportunity for camping. Most of the camping in Honduras is what they call informal campsites, which are staying at gas station parking lots. Um, the odd spot on the overhead seems all right, but then you read the reviews and it's really just like parked alongside some local's house or even some of the beach camping. It's maybe someone's private property, but it's not really a campsite. So the safety potentially is an issue. It's Mirador del Pacifico and it's um, near the town of Conchagua. A great stop again after the border. A little bit of treacherous road to get there, but well worth it. Um, you want to have four wheel drive for sure. We basically had a view of El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua, and the islands in between in a bay. So, what's next on the El Salvador list? The Laguna. So, that's the Laguna Alegria, and it's near San Miguel. Spots up the lagoon. It will swallow your car. <laughs> lagoon will swallow your car. There's a campground called Cerro Verde. It's the closest campground to the Santa Ana Volcano Hike Trailhead. So if you do want to camp and do the volcano hike, highly recommend that you go from that location. They do do rentals of camping stuff I believe mm, yeah. as well so if you were maybe traveling but you were like oh I'd like to do the hike and it'd be kind of fun to go and camp for a night or two they do offer everything there okay so after El Salvador we headed into Guatemala and so our top three camping spots in Guatemala are Lake Atlan so in Lake Atitlan I'm gonna say it properly Atitlan as people have corrected At me a few times Atitlan Atitlan I just blend it all together um, Lake Atitlan, so it's actually a spot that we've camped at. This was our second time camping there. It's a property that belongs to the Hotel Bahai Atlan. Atitlan, <laughs> amazing volcano views, nice weather, you can use the pool. What's next on the Guatemala list? Chichi Market. Chichi Market. Um, so if you are going to Guatemala and you like going to local markets, the Chichi Market, which is the Chichi Castanango Market, is the most famous market in Guatemala, but it is a very like local, authentic market. It only runs two days a week, Thursdays and Sundays. 
there's textiles and there's ladies like doing the embroidery right there and weaving fabric and even if you don't want to buy anything just to like walk and look around and the good thing about this camp spot is that it's within walking distance so it's like a kilometer and a half walk from the camp it doesn't really look like anything from the outside but then you go in and it's all like pine trees it's really and... nice really nice campsite like authentic campsite mm -hmm. so the name of that campsite is called casa toes masco something like that the owner's the owner's name is tomas and we've got one more guatemala campsite that was on the list volcano ranch it's kind of in the middle of a bunch of volcano areas and you can see um, several different volcanoes from the camp and then depending on how clear it is, you can see more. There is potential to see El Fuego and actually see volcanic eruption from this campsite. Uh, it wasn't clear enough when we were there to see it. And there's a really nice hike. Hikes feel like miradors, multiple miradors. Mm -hmm. The name of that place, I can't pronounce it either. I know that I can't, so I'll just put it in the comments. In the, I'll, just, I'll put it on the screen so that you can see it. Okay, so after Guatemala, we moved into Mexico. What were our favorite places in Mexico? John Wayne Canyon. That was a really cool spot. Like, middle of nowhere. About 45 minutes outside of Durango, down through, what is it, three... Three cattle gates. We're just surrounded in this horseshoe canyon. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's where they shoot like John Wayne, like movies. Like westerns. Westerns. They've got like old western villages there. They've got all kinds of like um, movie sets. El Chiflaron. And they have multiple waterfalls. That's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. the, the last one of the Cascades. But it basically starts from that waterfall and then it just like waterfall after waterfall just like cascading one down into the next and it's like maybe hour and a half hike to get to the top maybe not even not even and the water is like bright 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 clear blue cold and cold freezing cold mexiquilo Mexico, yeah. And this this place actually was a huge camping area as well. Yeah. Like, we asked like, "Where's the camping area?" And they're like, "You can go anywhere you want." And then we start driving in there, and you're like, "Oh my god, this place is huge!" And then we were hiking around, like, even bigger. We get there the first night, we're sleeping, and then Chris wakes up. He's like, "Tove, I think there's puppies outside the tent." And I'm like, "Puppies? What do you mean puppies outside the tent?" No, there was like a baby puppy outside the tent. Like he probably was seven, eight weeks old. Yeah, he was still he was still getting milk from the mom. That's how young he was. But yeah, so we named them Nugget, Macho, and Nacho, and those three dogs stayed at our camp the oh, whole time every, we were there. Yeah, yeah, three three nights we were there, and they were there. We'd wake up in the morning, and our shoes would be gone. Nugget would be moving our shoes around, and like right at the bottom of the ladder, and. Yeah. Yeah, Nug loved us. Yeah, yeah. It was hopefully he found a nice home while he's just running free and wild. Mexico, we found had so many great campsites. Like everywhere had good campsites, but Mexico, we couldn't narrow it down to three. So. We're giving you four, and even then, that was a really hard list. Rancho San Lorenzo. Hot, hot showers and white fluffy towels. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is this place is in the middle of nowhere. Like, two hours to get to this place, like, from any, like, the closest thing is two hours away. And it was advertised as cold showers. And then we get there, and in Spanish, he's telling me hot showers. And then he brings us these white fluffy towels and soap like we're at a hotel. And the camp area, like a real camp area, we're right in the forest. Yeah, lots of fallen trees that we're able to chop up and have nice campfires. Yeah. And there was, like, we were the only people there the whole time we were there. Like, we never saw a soul. We would also say that Mexico's so big, like, we really only scratched the surface still. Yeah. So we, in all our travels, we went down the east coast, kind of came across the middle. 
and then into Guatemala that way and then coming back through. We pretty much went up through sort of the middle of Mexico all the way up. Thank you. The adventure is not over. We have loads of video content from this trip still to come. We're spending the summer in Canada visiting family and then we're heading back on the road. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next amazing adventure.